I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and today we have an important topic. Uh, before we start, yesterday we have a question and until now zero Muslim was able to answer or what the Muslims they do, they call names. Uh, they are bully, you know, the bully. Actually, uh, before we start, uh, this is how the bully work, you know, in Islam. Anyone who cannot, they cannot refute him. Uh, they make excuses about why they cannot debate him. As an example here, look, look at this bully. Uh, Eliza is saying, this is what Christian Prince does. Get lost, just get out, let your dad call me. Your son of Muta hangs up, he cannot debate, he just hang up and insult. Okay, well this is uh, this is what the Muslim they say. But you know, I called as an example, Mimi Hijab, he hang up on me seven times, he did not let me talk. Correct? I hang up only in the ones who don't want to answer. He start asking me, what's your name? <laughs> and he changed the topic. Oh, let us talk about the Bible. We're talking about the Quran. Let's talk. So, my friend, you you nation of a bully, like your Prophet Muhammad. When the Christian they came to your Prophet, challenging for a debate, the first 24 hours he never answered anything. He refused even to say hi. Second day, he told them, <laughs> Well, if you want to debate, let us ask Allah to curse the one is lying. So even your prophet is a bully like you. And he was bullying his uncle Abu Lahab, as we see in the last of the Quran, where he said Tabat yada Abu Lahab. So, uh, uh, and he's making fun of his wife. She will wear a robe from uh, from uh, from leaves, which is very bully, stupid. So they cannot refute us. And here we go to prove all our videos. Not a single Muslim. You said I will hang up on you. I will call you on your live channel if you have one. You can hang up on me. I will not be able to hang up on you. But you are a coward. You don't dare to call me. You don't dare to let me call you. Now, let us go to the topic. One of the Muhammadan, the Abduls, he posed this comment in the, uh, in the comment section. And this is a comment we see often made by Muslims. They say this. Jews are not allowed to pray in a church but they can do in the mosque. Actually, I'm so happy if the Jews, they do that, but this is not a true really. But anyway, I support this idea. I don't want somebody not to believe in Jesus to be in my church. As simple as that, doesn't matter who. And as long as the Jews, they are, you know, especially those Jews who say those things, uh, they, they consider J Jesus as a fraud, then why they should be in our church? There's no reason. However, as long you are saying that the Jews, they are saying that we are allowed to pray in the church, but we are, we are not allowed to pray in the church, but we are allowed to pray in the mosque. Why? Why do you think the Jews are saying that? I will tell you the news. You know, let me take it from the end. The Jews, they have a plan to take back all the converted temples, which the Muslim, they occupy, and they force the Jews to take it from them, starting from the temple of Solomon. So when the Jews, they say, we can pray in the mosque, we cannot pray in a church. They are telling you the plan. 
we are going to take over every single mosque of the pagan Muhammad in Jerusalem. The Muslims are so happy, so excited. The, the Jews can pray in our mosque, they can pray in the church. Actually, we are more excited <laughs> to see the Jews taking your mosque, <laughs> which is theirs anyway. They are taking it back, and they are not taking any of our churches. <laughs> so, my friend, I am so glad that the Jews are convincing you, and you are so excited that the Jews soon, they are going to take the Temple of Solomon soon and they will make it their own certain temple. I mean, the, the center temple of the Jews. It should be actually. So when a Muhammad and he go happy, like a, you know, like a little kid, jumping like, like a monkey from a place to place, saying the Jews, the Jews, they can pray in our mosque, but they cannot pray in a church. My friend, the plan is big, and I'm so happy that you support the plan. And I support it too. Please, Jews, don't pray in our churches, pray in the mosque. Take it all. Now, but who is the one who is behind those ideas that Jews can pray in a, uh, 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 in a mosque, but they can't pray uh, in a church? Let us see the person. A person who lives in Jakarta. His name is Tuiva Singer. Why Jews are allowed to pray in the mosque? Listen carefully and try not to laugh. And again, this is an area of idolatry. Um, yeah, let us get biblical. This is the Muslim, by the way. Islam. Those are Muslim channels. They are posting the videos of Tawiba Singer supporting the idea that Jews can pray in a mosque, but they can't pray in a church. I am so glad that the Muslims are supporting this idea. Soon we will see the Jews are praying in the Kaaba, taking over it. Because remember, the Muslims, they claim that the Kaaba is built by Abraham. Abraham belonged to the Jews. So the Jews have to take it. I support that. Islam has a very unique status. And again, this is an area of idolatry. Um, in that the Islam is, is definitely not idolatry. Yeah, definitely, Islam is not idolatry. Why are you saying that? Because he lives in Jakarta. We know that if he says something about Islam, he will be shish kebab in two seconds. He is just a hypocrite man. All of us, we know that the Muslim, they kiss stones, they pray around the stone, and they say Allah and his prophet knows best, which means they are associating God with a man. His name is Muhammad. Continue. M Muslims worship one God absolutely worship one god uh, there are christians who make claims about islam that they worship moon gods that's absolute nonsense that's absolutely nonsense the christian they say that not the jews it's not the jews who say that so why the quran says the jews they say that
All right, is it better now? Is it better now? Well, it looked like we are going to cancel then our program for tonight and we will redo it tomorrow. You know what we can do. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to keep a video which is already three minutes of it. The audio is bad, you know. So maybe we have to redo the same video tomorrow. All right. Because you guys have no patience and you know that there's a buzz. There's a buzz. By the way, I receive inspiration from Allah like buzz sometime. Did I buzz you? I'm good in buzzing. Hey, Abdul, did I buzz you too? Because Christians are buzzed. What about the Abdul? Hmm? Okay, we will cover the topic tomorrow again then, as long as the buzzing issue is not good. And even if it's fixed, you know, I'm, uh, that's it. I lost the mood. You know, you guys buzzed me. <laughs> what you are okay now that the video is, 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 is bad now? What you are okay after what you did? <laughs> Somebody of you did the buzz my mic, you know? Somebody is using black magic against my microphone. Shakaku, kakaku. Maybe Allah, he sent Harut and Marut against my microphone. And don't tell me Allah cannot do it. Allah knows best and forget about the rest. So should we uh, uh, delete this video and make it tomorrow? What do you think? Anyway, we don't have too many here. I mean, we have only 300, 445. I mean, if I bring my four wives and the kids I have from them, I would have more. I mean, let us be honest here. I mean, you know, we are Arab. Like, what the heck is that? If we had a little barbecue, like for like the neighbors, we will have like a, a two thousand people. What is this? Where is everybody? Four hundred fifty, four hundred fifty people. What is that? I suppose you know it's better. It's forty-seven. As somebody is like. It's not four, four, five, four, four, five. It's four, four, seven. Like, hello. I mean, it's getting better. Don't break your heart. Why do you have, why you have a heart anyway? Don't you know it's legal, illegal <laughs> these days? <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, so as you see here, the hypocrisy, we will make more, you know, about this topic. But here, as you see, this guy, he lives in Jakarta. We knew that. And this hypocrite man, maybe the one who will download the video can cut it off and fix it. And, you know, but let us show you how this hypocrite work. And again, by the way, I really support the idea that Jews should pray in the mosque, not in our churches. Why? Because I don't want them, the Israeli, to take our churches. We want them to take only what the Muslims took from them. We took nothing from them, right? So if we go back here, uh, while this man explaining why the Jews can uh, pray in a mosque, later we will show you something very embarrassing from the same person. Uh, Muslims worship one god they're very clear about who care who's a worship one god if they worship one god is, is their god is your god is muhammad a prophet for you so look at this hypocrite if you don't accept muhammad as a prophet and obviously you don't otherwise you will be a muslim so if you are saying that muhammad is not a prophet but you are saying that in your heart because you are a potato son of muta that's mean you agree that Muhammad, he was not sent by the true God. So he was sent by the false God. So how in the world a Jew saying to us and making a lecturer saying, it's obviously the Muslim, they worship one God. Who care? The question is, is he the correct God? If he is, so why, how come the teaching of Islam is totally the opposite of Judaism? See how... Low, trashy person this person is. About that in Surah 2, 160. 
And by the way, this guy is acting like a and Nag. He remembered the Quran. So he, he found you that the Quran says Allah is one God. And this is in Surah 2. And now he is a, he's a rabbi, by the way. Like he is, he know the verses, like, and he act like if he's trying to remember. And this is in the Quran, a chapter, a chapter, a chapter two, yeah, verse what? Three, it's, it's very clearly outlined yeah. in the Quran that there is no else, just one God. And, and therefore, Islam has a unique status in that they are not idol worshippers at all. They worship one God. Um, does, that doesn't mean Judaism and Islam are the same, but the, there are there are enormous differences in Jewish law. A Jew is not allowed to even walk into a church. A Jew, let's say, who's visiting Italy and wants to just see. So, guys, the Jews they cannot enter a church, correct? But in case you do not know, the majority of the Jews already are Christians. In case you do not know. The majority of the Jews who are still Jews, they don't agree with this stupidity. But this is the plan of the, you know, the new generation of Zionists to take over all of Jerusalem. And actually, I don't mind with this. Walk into a church just to um, maybe admire its, its architecture or to see its flying buttresses. It's absolutely forbidden to even compliment it. You're not allowed to even talk about it. Lo Yishama al picha the Torah says. Uh, a Jew can't enter a Trinitarian church. Um, a Jew can ask a, a mosque, would you mind if, when you're not using the mosque, if we can use it to pray our morning prayers? Can we borrow your mosque? Can mm. we pray? And we're absolutely permitted to, because they it's not a, a place of idolatry, they worship one God. So that's very important. So So here you see the hypocrite the potato saying they worship one God. Let us see the same person. And by the way, when he speak, actually the whole video he is cut, he speak about the the Christian they worship Jesus. And this is the idolatry he's talking about. We go to the different verse in the Bible, we will find that Jesus, sorry, uh, uh, Abraham, he worship a man. This potato he said that the Christian they worship a man. The same potato, he say, will the Jews worship a man too? Listen carefully. We go in his video here. Uh, <laughs> what a stupid idiot. <laughs> 3.34 Do the Jews worship a man like the Christians? Let us hear. Scripture, Abraham is one of those people who you just, who I just love and I adore it. I don't think I'm alone on this. He's very, very unique. And that blows through in these passages uh, when Abraham... Uh, is visited by God, and then suddenly he sees uh, three angels, three men, the Bible <laughs> says. <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> Did you hear it? Abraham, he was seeing three men, and one of them is God. The same stupid guy, he said, Christians, they are idolaters because they worship a man. Do you see how hypocrite he is? This is why it took me some time to go like with life because I, I got an idea to search for the same liar what he will say about that topic. And I found a video about him. What he will say about Abraham was visited by God as a man. Three men come to Abraham, and God came to him as a man. And Abraham, he bowed down, and he worshipped that man. Do you see why this person, he is not respected by any? He lives in Jakarta, he sells diamonds. What do you expect? Business is good. Not only that, the same stupid guy, he admit that the Messiah is called God in Jeremiah.
who the Messiah was called God where in Jeremiah at the sea watch and laugh at this hypocrite man to 33 uh, we can have the Messiah called God in earlier on in the book of Jeremiah did you hear it we have the Bible calling the Messiah God in the earlier book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse number 6. Did you hear it? The same hypocrite liar who says those who call Jesus God are idolater is the same hypocrite guy who admit that the Messiah is God in the Bible. Listen carefully for those who they are deaf. We called God in the book of Jeremiah, chapter um, chapter 33. Uh, we can have the Messiah called God in earlier on in the book of Jeremiah. <laughs> so God he worshipped, he was worshipped as a man by Abraham. The Messiah is called God in the book of Jeremiah. The God of the Jews and the Christians, he is a spirit, and the God of Islam is not, and he have no spirit. So how this liar, he keeps saying that Muslims and Jews, they worship one God, but is it the same God? There is many they call themselves rabbi, but all of us we knew that they are businessmen. All of those are businessmen. Their opinion doesn't count. However, I really support the Muslim keep saying, and I support this person keep saying, that Jews can pray in a mosque, but they should not even go to a church. We know the plan. The plan is to take over the Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, which is not a mosque. And we agree, this is the temple of Suleiman. Even the stupid Muhammad in his hadith, he admitted that the one who built the temple is Solomon. So the, the Jews, they are preparing themselves for taking over all the previously used to be Jewish temple and maybe all the mosque who built after the occupation of the Arab to Jerusalem. And this is why they are giving them the excuse that we can pray only in a mosque because the Muslim might say to them, okay, well, uh, maybe the Roman, they took a temple from you when they occupied Jerusalem. Why you don't take it? You know, go take it, pray there, make it your temple. So the idea is we can pray only in a mosque because simply we want to take our temples back. If we go to the book of Genesis, When he said that God, he came to Abraham. And Abraham, he found the three men standing in his tent or in front of his tent. And the Lord of Abraham, the God Almighty, he came and Abraham, he bowed down to him, worshipping him. And this is why Jesus said, before Abraham I am. The Jews like this boy, at the time of Jesus, they said to him, before Abraham you are, you are not even 50 years old. He said, truly, truly, I say to them, that Abraham, he saw my day, and he rejoiced for it. That is the day. 
So when they say to you that the, there's such a, a hypocrite rabbi, he's not a rabbi. This guy is just a, actually, you know what? Just to just to show you something, the hypocrisy of both sides. This guy and the Muslims who support him. This guy, he is a Jew supposedly. So why he is blonde? Why he have a blue eyes? Isn't it you Muslim you say that the Jews are taking over the land now are not really the true Jews? So how come the Muslims suddenly they are in love with someone who claimed to be a rabbi, but he never was really from the land of Israel and he don't look like any of them? Why they support this guy? Simply he enjoy it. And I'm so happy that they are supporting each other. Satan is uniting the synagogue of the devil. From one side, Muhammad. From the other side, the fake rabbi. Who just said that even the Bible called Jesus God. And why the Bible called Jesus God? Is it this is a blasphemy? The same bit to he explained to you. He says to you, Oh, there is something behind this. You don't understand. What is that we don't understand? Unique. And that blows through in these passages uh, when Abraham uh, is visited by God and then suddenly he sees uh, three angels, three men, the Bible says, Anoshim coming toward him. But in fact, the story doesn't begin there. The story begins earlier in Genesis 17. God, Abraham was a very old man, he was nearly 100 years old. And God calls upon him to be circumcised and to circumcise his household. And here Abraham is, he's a very old man, and he's an extreme, I mean, extremely uncomfortable. You know, it's the third day after circumcision, which is according which according to Jewish tradition is according to the Bible is the the most painful, most excruciating. Okay, okay. Are we going to cry now? Did you circumcise yourself? Let us see first the circumcision. Do you know that not Muhammad was not circumcised? Do you know that? Muhammad is a thief. This guy is a liar. Making a drama of circumcision. You can go read the verses and laugh at him. Same time, according to Muhammad, Abraham, he circumcised himself by using the ads or the ads. Imagine Abraham using such a tool to circumcise himself. I mean, Abraham, excuse my language, he have to be really, really, really big. <coughs> Do you know that according to Islam, that Abraham, he used this tool to cut the end of his private part. And this is why this guy making a drama of it, of Abraham being in pain. Let us go to Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the stupid Muhammad giving us the name of the tool and how Abraham did circumcision to himself. Allah Messenger said, the prophet Abraham circumcised himself after he had passed the age of 80. How? What age? 80. Let us go back to the stupid rabbi. How? Long? What age? 80. Let us go back to the stupid rabbi. Okay. Oh, this is the commercial break. Not now. <laughs> commercial break. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when Abraham he circumcised himself, tell us. Extreme, I mean, extremely uncomfortable. 
you know, it's the third day after circumcision, which is according, which according to Jewish tradition is according to the Bible, the the most painful, most excruciating, and God is visiting Abraham. Let us go back. God as well. is visiting. Let us go back. Ex extreme, I mean, extremely uncomfortable. You know, it's the third day after a very old man. He was nearly 100 years old. He is 100 years old. According to the rabbi, he is 100 years old. According to Muhammad, he is 80 years old. Not much different. I mean, Mir Miriam is a sister of Aaron. So, Muhammad, he's saying that Abraham, he was circumcised at the age of 80. And he circumcised himself by using the aids or the ads tool. If one of you can stop by this rabbi and ask him and call him how Abraham he did circumcise himself. And if somebody, you know, like this guy, he will never answer a question anyway. Like, do you really believe Muhammad is a prophet? You know, from us, you know, uh, Muhammad is a respected prophet. We believe, you know, uh, you know, but he will never dare to say he's not. Because the reason he, you know, if, if he believes Muhammad is a prophet, then he should convert to Islam. The second you say you are a Jew, the second you say you are a Christian, obviously, or a Hindu, or a Buddha, or an atheist, you say it, you don't say it, you are saying in your heart, Muhammad is a fraud. So, my friends, I'm not going to keep you for long. As you see, this guy is a potato, and he admitted that Jesus was called God in the Bible. The Messiah, the Christ. And he admitted that Abraham, he worshipped God as a man. And not only that, this guy, he keeps saying that we and Muslim, we share worshipping one God, according to the stupid Muhammad. The Quran says that both Christians and Jews worship the Son of God. So which one of you is lying? Either you say Muhammad, Actually, once in one of his video, he said, well, we don't have really any source of such a person. His name is Uzair, but he did not dare to say Muhammad is a liar. Because the Quran is so clear, says the Jews, they say, the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say, there's one of the Jews here, it says the Jews, the Jews, not one of the Jews. When the Quran says the sun set in murky water, they say it appeared. And the Quran says the sun, he found the sun set in murky water. He did not say Allah that he found as it appeared to him. Don't add words. So the Muslims always, they do duct tape. But as you see, according to the Quran, Christians and Jews both, they don't believe in one God as Unitarian. As you see, the Quran confirmed that. The Quran confirmed that the Jews believe in the Son of God and the Christian believe in the Son of God. And they're proven in front of your eyes. So either this guy, he have to admit that Muhammad is a fraud line about the Jews, or he have to admit that the, the Jews really worship the Son of God. And he mentioned to us, Jeremiah chapter 23 verse number 6 saying that Jesus was called or the Christ was called as God in the Bible. Now he said that Jerusalem was called as God in the Bible. That's false. And I don't know how a person he claimed that he speak Hebrew. He is saying such a thing. It's not really saying God. This is this is the city of righteousness. It's not God. The Lord of righteousness. So you will call it, that, that, that means this is the city where people who worship the true God are going to be settled. So this person is a fraud, and the Muslims, they support him, and I agree with them they should, because I would love to see Al-Aqsa Mosque going back to the Jews. So when the Jews, they say, we can pray in a mosque, but we cannot pray in a church. That because the plan is so clear. They want to take it back. Doesn't matter how pricey it's going to be. Even if they have to go with war with everybody in the world, they are going to take the temple back. So yes, and I support that idea, that Jews can and should pray only in the mosque so they can take their temple back. And this is the plan.
and I support this plan. And I actually, I pray, I pray, I, this is my personal prayer, that the Jews, they will take back the temple of Solomon, which is not a mosque. Even according to the Islamic books, even according to the Quran, <clears throat> if you go in the Quran, you will find this. And by the way, this guy, he said, we as a Jews, we cannot go to the church because some churches, they have like a statues. But the Quran says that Allah, he ordered Solomon to build the statues in his temple. Chapter 34, 13. 34, 13. And according to Muhammad, Muhammad, the first Abdul, the biggest Abdul in the world, the biggest fraud, he admitted to that the one who built this place is not the Muslims and Muslims have nothing to do with it. When the Muslims, they say this is our mosque, it is a fraud. Even their religion don't agree with them. This is their false prophet saying the following. When Suleiman ibn Dawood finished building Baytul Maqdis, do you see it? People, do you see it? Blind people, do you see it? Blind Muslim, do you see it? Blind Jews, do you see it? Who is the one who built the temple? Solomon. And what he has inside or he had inside the temple? Statues. If you look at the translation here, by the way, the word statues is done, is gone. You need to look for a true translation because the Muslim try to hide it because they say to you, oh, Islam is against statues. How Islam is against statues? And then Allah is ordering Solomon to have his statues. We change the translator. There's no statues. Nowhere to be found. What happened? It's a change again. Maybe we'll get lucky with somebody have little dignity to give a correct answer. Finally, of worship statues. Do you see it? Do you see it? And here you see that Muhammad is a fraud. Because how in one hand he say that we are against his statues and his statues is a paganism as the Muslim they claim 24 hours, 7 days a week. And then we find that God of Islam, he ordered Solomon to build the temple, include images and statues inside. And then if you ask the Abdul, they will say to you, at that time, at that time, at that time, <laughs> show me the true translation of your book, hypocrite. Okay, I will show you. We do, we do not deny any translation. Secondly, Abdul, you don't look, you look just look, look at the look at the stupidity. Sufyan is scratching his nuts, and he got us an answer. So us your correct translation, you hypocrite. Do you see us? Do you see us saying we don't accept this translation? This translation. I use always translation. If a Muslim he open right now and he read for me the verse, I will not. I will not play the game of translation. Secondly, Abdul. In a translation, it can happen that translator they have different words, but you cannot take off the word statues. 
you can't take off sentence from their place they are gone totally in the bible they use the same word like maybe the statues here is used and not too much good in english to find the other word is equal to it so they can use whatever words equal to the word the statues but muslim they take it off period If we go right now to chapter 4, verse number 34, you will see the Muslim that says, First, you, uh, uh, like you school her. Second, uh, you jail her in her, uh, you, you take away from her, stay away from her bed. Third, uh, you uh, beat her lightly. We can't find in the Quran the word first. We can't find second. We can't find lightly. We can't find any of those hypocrite liars you see we just heard this guy the Jewish guy posting verses in his screen did I deny the translation Did I say I don't agree I did not we Christian we approve everything everything written in the Old Testament the hypocrite is the Muslims who their Quran approve everything written in their book but in debates they don't agree Abdullah Mas'ud saying it is a big lie. It is not a statues, it is images in a frame. Uh, okay, Abdullah Mas'ud, are you willing to call me and read the words for me in Arabic? Is that fair, guys? In the front of everybody, in the front of everybody, are you brave enough to call me right now? I will open my Skype. And if the word statues is not there in Arabic, I will apologize. Not only that, I will say that I was lying to you. Is that fair, people, or this guy is a coward like he's a prophet? Do you dare to call me, Abdullah Masoud, and accept the challenge right now? If the word in Arabic is not there, in the Quran, saying the word is statues, I will say whatever you want me to say. Do you dare or you are a potato? Your family is sleeping right now. The excuse of the Abdul, his four wives are sleeping. Look at the excuse. His four wives are sleeping. So if you wake up your wife because you are doing jihad for the sake of Allah, she will be upset. You are worried about your wife, you potato? Go to the balcony and call me coward like your prophet here we go this is the word in the front of us Tamathil. we can copy the word and take it to google translation right now in the front of everybody in here let us open google translation everybody will laugh at you in a second you are just a certified potato so copy Go to Google, translate, paste. Choose language. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> You stupid idiot. Even your translation, your Muslim translation using the word statues. Even your own translation. Images, statues. And you ask them why Allah he Allah, you know, he ordered. He says, at that time it was a permitted brother. Huh? So at that time it's okay? Like <laughs> You know, I'm not going to keep you long. By the way, we will go back to zero later. We will go back to the topic about do Allah breathe. I mean, the most funny comment, go and read the, uh, watch the previous video. You will see the most hilarious comment of the Muslim. Christian Prince, why don't show your face? We ask the Muslim, do Allah breathe? Christian Prince, if you are a man, stop being in your basement. Uh, uh, Abdul, do Allah breathe? He breathed from inside him. What he have inside him? Do he have a breath? Like he breathed a soul? There's a soul inside him? If the soul is created, why it's inside him? 
Did he swallow it? <laughs> well, Christian Prince, if you are a man, uh, show yourself. Uh, if you are a man, uh, you know, stop hiding. Uh, Abdul, okay. Do Allah breathe? A hey, Christian Prince, I'm telling you. If you are a man, okay, stop hiding behind your computer screen. Like, what the heck? They will never dare to answer. They don't dare to call me. They don't dare even to answer in the comment. Go watch the videos. Go, guys, the previous video, just watch it, honestly. Go down to all the comment of the Abdul. Find me one Abdul. He's answering the questions. They ignore it totally. Why? Because Muhammad is a mentally ill person. Nobody knows what he is saying. No Muslim can answer because they don't know even who is their God. When their God, he say, I breathe. Okay, do God breathe? A Muslim answered me yesterday. He says, to be honest with you, Christian Prince, you will not get the best of answer of us. Okay, so from who? Go to this guy. Okay, did you go to him? If Allah is not a spirit, and he has no spirit, so how he say my spirit? Who is the stupid here? Somebody have to be stupid here. And if Allah, he is creating Adam from a spirit, which is his spirit, but it is not his spirit. So what is that spirit? <laughs> and did Allah swallow that spirit? <laughs> The thief Muhammad, as usual, he copy a story. He add his own spice, and then he do not know how to fix it. He don't know how to fix it. Allah is talking, that's it. She's kebab. So when I have fashioned him completely, and breathe into him. Look, look, look how the translation even changed. Look, look. It says here, I breathe into him, between two bracket Adam, the soul which I created for him. This is here in the left, in the Arabic. In the Arabic it says, the soul which I created for him. What a big fat liars. We change the translator again. Let us see what will happen. Miraculous will happen. The whole verses will change in the speed of light. There is nothing the breathe to him. I look, where, look, when I have fashioned him, and breathe into him of my spirit. How in the world the word my spirit become the spirit I created for him? It says in Arabic, from my spirit. In the other translation it says, from the spirit I created for him, brother. Why they are doing that? Because they're trying to fix the stupidity. And you know what? If we go back to the previous stupid translation, which is false, if Allah, he created a spirit, and this spirit is made for Adam, why Allah swallowed the spirit so he can breathe it? <laughs> hey, hey, give me the spirit which I created, Adam. Okay, give me. Okay. Okay, now, Adam, open your mouth. Okay. So Allah created the spirit for Adam. Then Allah, he swallowed the spirit. And then he breathed the spirit into Adam. It makes sense, but the Quran does not say any of what they are saying here in translation. And as you see, we just change the translator, we find different verse. When I have fashioned him and the breathing to him of my spirit, my spirit, not a spirit, my spirit. Do we have Abdul? So I advise you all to go back. We have more than 900 comments, I think, now in the in the previous video. And it is hilarious. Go and read the comedy of the Muslims. Nobody knows what they are saying. Nobody. Do we have any Abdul? Okay, just a reminder, I have a link down in the info of this video. We have our book. This is my gift to my beloved Indian people for free in the Malayalam language. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly. Forgive me if I'm not. 
uh, it's for free and I want to say thank you for the person who translated the book actually it looked like he did a good job I do not know how, uh, how to read the language so I'm not sure really about the quality of translation but I'm assuming that he did his best so the deception of Allah right now is exist in this language I don't know how many millions they speak this language in India but I think it's one of the biggest languages in India and I'm so happy to see my book delivered for free for all my beloved Indian people. I love Indian people. I have friends from, even from the Arnold Christians. Uh, and we have now our books translated to many, many, many languages. Me, myself, really, I cannot believe that time come and my books is translated to all languages in the world, Chinese, Russian, uh, Indian, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's correct to say the word Indian, but Malayalam, whatever, it's a Malaysian language, Indonesian, uh, Albanian, uh, French, Portuguese, uh, uh, German, I mean, you name it. Fr fr you know. So I am really blessed. The Lord, he blessed us with great people who they do their work, support our mission. So this is a great news. The link is down there if you are from India. Please help us to spread this book all over. Don't forget to download the book immediately because this link might disappear. Don't depend on the link, you save it in your favorite. Never save just a link in your favorite for a book. Download the book. Those are legally given to you from me for free. So don't worry about downloading them. You are not breaking the law. All right? We are not here trying to make money because if I'm trying to make money, I will sell them. I will sell every single one of those translations. I will not give them for free. So we are here to help the Lord. He says for free it for you took, for free you give. In the same time, I am really grateful. There's many good one or of you. They are supporting me. They are making donations. So the Lord always give us back, you know, maybe way less than what, what the books can give us. But at the end of the day, as long the Lord, he provides us what we, need, what we need, nobody need more than what he need. Nobody need more than what he need. So as long the Lord, he provides us, we are going to give and give and give and give. And we pray to the Lord that now soon we will have millions and millions of Indian downloading this book all over. Actually, I should make a video just about this book so we can attract people to the, 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 the title of the video so people, they can know about it. Maybe I should now hang up actually and make, uh, make a title with this short video and I invite you to join us and don't forget to give us a like when we post the video, maybe five minutes from now after I finish my live broadcast. So I will go, I will make review of the pages in the front of your eyes. And uh, we really want uh, people to do work. I mean, it doesn't cost you really much. Posting the, the, the book around doesn't cost you much. I mean, it's free. It's given to you for free. There is one person taking the risk. He might get killed. He might and highly possible, but my books will stay forever. You can kill me, but you cannot kill my books. I challenge you. And actually, the more they make a threat against me, the more my books will become popular. So I say, I need really people who they are willing to work. And it costs you nothing, literally nothing. Many of you, you spend most of your day maybe in the internet. It's just a click and paste and let people get the books for free. All right? So I will go live again. I will give you 10 minutes, guys, to have a break. And then we will make a title with the name of the book here. And soon, maybe next week, I'm going to publish my, uh, my book, Deception of Allah, in the Persian language, which is understood by the Persian, Afghanistan, etc as a gift again for those who speak those languages so look at the lord how how he is blessing us in persian 
in Malayalam, in Indonesian, Malaysian, Portuguese, Spanish, French, German, English, I and mean, you name it. Do you see how the Lord can support you? One day when I decide to write my books, it was an idea of Muslims actually. The Muslim, they said to me, as long as you have so much knowledge, how come you don't have zero books? It was the Muslims who inspired me. Or let us say, get me the idea. If you have so much knowledge, how come you have zero books? I said to myself, you are right. This knowledge should be preserved, should be given, should be, you know, like given to generation after us. And this is exactly what I did. I wrote books one after one, and more are coming, just wait for them. And one of the war, one I'm working in right now is the translation, a very accurate, honest translation, honest translation of the Quran. This is why it's taking me long, because I'm trying my best to make it the most accurate ever translation, which even a Muslim don't dare to say, his line. So I want to say thank you for the Muslim. Actually, the Muslim who is the one who made me come. You see, life is funny. The Muslim, they challenged me one day to go to a program called Pal Talk to debate them. I don't know what is Pal Talk. I went to Pal Talk in six months. All those who converted to Islam, they left Islam and they became admin in my chat room. And not only that, admins in Muslims' rooms who they are born from Muslim families, they left Islam too and they became Christians. Then Muslim, they start posting videos uh, in YouTube, posting pictures, so I suppose this is me. So I said, that's a good idea. Look like I should go to YouTube. Muslims are inviting me. So I came to YouTube and wherever I go, they complain. I mean, they are the one who invite me. They are the one who asked me to write books. They are the one who challenged me to go to Pal Talk. I went to Pal Talk, they went to the company and they sent thousands and thousands of emails and letters to ban me. Can you believe it? They are the one who invited me. And then I did the same in YouTube. They keep flagging my videos, one after one, one after one. <laughs> and the more you flag them, the more they are all over. You see, I don't keep my videos on my channel now. Thank you, Muslims, because, you know, we have different, different trick. Everybody downloading my videos. <laughs> Actually, if you if you look at the, at the people who download my videos, they have, 300,000 view, a million of you, a million and 200,000 view. Thank you, Lord, you know, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Muslims. <laughs> it is you who, who, this is why I start saying, please guys, download the videos, download the videos, we don't keep them here. If not the Muslim flagging my videos, I will not be saying that because it's not going to be worried about it. But because the Muslims now, they keep flagging my videos. So now every video I say, don't forget to download the videos so we can share them around. <laughs> so anyway, I will go live again and I will change the title for a new video. And we will have some nice conversation and we will talk a little bit about this book. And then we wish you, we wish you a great time with your family. And again, Abdul, uh, next time when you say the Jews can pray in the mosque, Christians, you know what to say, right? Say to them, yes, so they can take it. And I really support that the Jews should take back the building, which is Solomon. He built according to their prophet. Even their funny prophet, he admit that this is the temple of Solomon. The one who built it is where to belong. As simple as that. If I am the one who built the house, well, this is my house. And I do not need papers to prove it. I do not need witnesses to prove it because I have the biggest fraud witness in the world, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Can the Muslim they say Muhammad is a liar? They cannot. I remember when I was at school, the teacher, he was saying, the Jews, do you talk 
Jerusalem, and they took Al-Aqsa, and we should take it back. I put my hand. He said, not you again. What, 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 what? I said, sir, who is the one who built the, the temple? <laughs> he said, Prophet Solomon, peace be upon him. So I said, this is, this, so this is for the Jews. <laughs> A stupid teacher, well, sir. Who is the one who built the temple? Uh, Prophet Solomon, uh, peace be upon him. Okay, but he's a Jew, so it's for the Jews. Get out of here! You always do this. Why you do that to us? Get out! Yeah, this guy, I hate him. I cannot take him no more. Yeah, what I did to God to bring this guy to me? Like you're an idiot. You're a stupid. You keep saying this is our mosque, our mosque, our mosque, and then we ask you who is the one who built it. Then you give me the name of a Jew. How stupid you are! I mean, how stupid you are. Like, who is the one who built it? It's you. So who, and the Jews took it? If the one is the, the one who built it is a Jew, so give it to the Jews. <laughs> so Muslims, I'm so glad that you go around and you keep saying, we, the Muslims, the Jews can pray in our mosque. I love that. And this is why we see in the news, nonstop, the Jews entering the Aqsa Mosque. Why? The plan is so clear. They need to take it as soon as possible. Uh, if we go right now, and we search in Prophet Google, we will find every single almost day the news about the Jews non-stop trying to take back and they go inside the mosque and they pray because this is their this is their temple everybody knows it's not a secret everybody knows it's just a matter of time and yes this is their land and yes this is their temple and yes they should take it back and yes, this is not the temple built by the Muslims. And yes, even Muhammad says so. So I am so glad that the Muslims they support that idea that the Jews, they can pray in a mosque, but they can pray in a church because we don't want the Jews to take our churches. Our churches are ours. We build them. Give them back what they built. Give the Jews their temple. Give the Jews every temple the Muslim they took from them and lawfully. So we will be back and give us maybe 10 minutes. We will make a little video about the new book so we can keep it there just to inform the Indian people about the new accomplishment of the new book. Thank you. God bless you. And don't forget to join us. Give me just five minutes. The, the link for the, 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 uh, the new video is going to be created very, very fast. I mean, a few minutes, just two minutes, and you can join again in the chat. Thank you and God bless you.